Aftermath, Life in the Fallout of the Third Reich, 1945-1955, by Harold Yanner, is a comprehensive exploration of Germany's transformation in the decade following the end of World War II. Yanner scrutinizes the physical, emotional, and psychological landscapes of a nation grappling with the ruins of war, the guilt of genocide, and the challenge of rebuilding both its cities and its identity. At the outset, the author depicts a country in shambles, with cities reduced to rubble by relentless Allied bombing campaigns. The German population was faced with an immense loss of life, widespread displacement, millions of refugees and returning soldiers, not to mention the profound moral devastation wrought by the revelations of the Holocaust. This set the stage for a period of intense struggle and adaptation. Yenner doesn't flinch from describing the hardship experienced by the German populace who had to grapple with defeat and occupation. Physical survival became a daunting task amid shortages of food, shelter, and basic necessities. Women played a pivotal role in the aftermath as they cleared debris in Trümmerfrauen, rubble women, teams, and worked to locate scarce provisions while many German men were either dead, captured, or incapacitated. The book discusses the psychological condition of the country, where the specter of Nazi ideology still lingered. Admitting guilt was a complex, painful process, and many Germans experienced repression and defensiveness, striving to come to terms with their complicity in the regime's crimes. Yet, there was also an astonishing capacity for regeneration and adaptation. Jaener brings out how the silence about the Nazi atrocities was both a coping mechanism and a social phenomenon that allowed the society to move forward. Re-education and denazification campaigns, primarily operated by the Allied forces, aimed to dismantle National Socialist thought and reshape Germany's political culture. The effectiveness of these programs was varied, with Jaener critiquing their sometimes superficial application and the temptation among Germans to pay lip service to the process without genuinely abandoning their indoctrinated beliefs. Economically, Jaener narrates Germany's journey from destitution to the beginning of the economic miracle. Initially, the society operated on a barter system, given the worthlessness of the Reichsmark and the scarcity of goods. The introduction of the Deutsche Mark in 1948 by the Western Allies stabilized the economy, setting a foundation for future prosperity. However, the path was not smooth, as initial inflationary pressures imposed hardship on a populace already reeling from the war. Culturally, the post-war period saw a clash between an urge to return to pre-Nazi normalcy and a need to forge a new German identity. Art, literature, and film from this era serve as poignant testimonials to the nation's trauma and its attempts to process and distance itself from its recent past. A new wave of culture aimed to reject the straitjacket of Nazi aesthetics, embracing a range of styles and influences from abroad. Jenner illustrates how the Allied occupation influenced the reordering of German society. The four zones of control, American, British, French, and Soviet, engaged in varying degrees of oversight and reconstruction program implementation, with the Soviet zone evolving into the socialist GDR, German Democratic Republic, and the other three eventually merging to form the Federal Republic of Germany, FRG. The division would cement the Cold War's polarities in Germany, the author emphasizes the resilience of the Germans during this rebuilding period. The term rubble women becomes emblematic of how individuals took the remains of their shattered surroundings and began piecing together their lives with a remarkable pragmatism. This reconstruction was both literal in terms of the cities and metaphorical in terms of the society's moral compass. Moreover, Jaener delves into the experience of the Holocaust survivors and Jewish communities exploring the complex layers of trauma, the efforts to rebuild their lives, and the challenges they faced in a society that was often reluctant to fully face its recent atrocities. The long shadows of the Holocaust affected not just survivors, but also the German consciousness, contributing to the tension in the nation's collective psyche. The book also discusses the generational divides as the youth who grew up in the war's aftermath began to question the complicit silence of their elders. This was a dynamic that would become even more pronounced in later decades, but foundations of this conflict were laid in the immediate post-war era. Migration, 
influenced by both the push of Germany's upheavals and the pull of opportunities abroad, reshaped post-war German society. A significant number of Germans emigrated, while others moved within the divided country, shaping demographic shifts that would have long-term social implications. In concluding, Jener draws attention to the remarkable transformation that took place as West Germany integrated into the European community and re-established itself as a democratic society, while East Germany took a markedly different path under Soviet influence. The Reconstruction period laid the groundwork for what would eventually become a stable, prosperous, and, albeit divided, reinvigorated society. The close of this 10-year window sees the foundation for modern Germany, with the economic miracle underway, and with a population that had largely embraced democracy and a new start, yet with the weight of the past defining its moral and cultural contours. Janer's account is a portrait of a society that had been mangled by its own hands, but that managed to, piece by piece, erect a new edifice out of the debris of its demolished myths and devastated landscapes. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.